Live from the 7 News night team. Continuing coverage of Tropical Storm Rita. They are boarding up and getting out in Key West. I'm Joel Brown, where residents are getting ready for Rita's wrath. Time is running out. Voters making their last preparations. I'm Ross Lowe in Marathon. Rita is closing in. Evacuations are underway, and the road out of the Keys has been jam-packed. I'm Nicole Insalata in Key Largo, where getting out is also a top priority. Wind and waves crashing the South Florida shoreline, already battered by Hurricane Katrina. I'm Tiffany Tucker in Hollover Beach. We'll tell you what to expect. What do you need to ride out a storm? In most places, supplies are either running short or gone. I'm Tom Haynes at an area of Publix. I'll have what you need to know coming up. And our coverage doesn't end there. The night team with everything you need to know to get ready for Rita. Good evening, everybody. I'm Craig Stevens. I'm Belkis Nure. 7 News at 10 o'clock starts right now. This is a special edition of 7 News. Tracking Tropical Storm Rita. And you are looking live at the heart of Key West, where the worst of Rita is yet to come. The evacuation just about over, the storm just about to move in. Heading north now to the Middle Keys. These are live pictures out of Marathon, where it's definitely time to get inside. Live now to Key Largo, where the story here, too, is evacuation, residents playing it safe, and getting out of the Keys. On now we go to Hollywood Beach. The wind's just one sign, Rita is on the way. We also have live pictures from over at Hallover Beach, where the coast is certainly not clear at this hour. And of course, as you have come to expect, we have big night team coverage tonight. Crews in three counties, from Key West to Key Largo and points all along the South Florida coast. We have got every angle covered. Tropical Storm Rita headed this way, and it seems to be only getting stronger. And if you think residents aren't taking it seriously, think again. A mass exodus out of the Keys. Good evening, everyone. First things first, no school in Monroe, Dade, or Broward counties tomorrow. Now our attention turning to just how close Rita will come to South Florida and the Keys. Let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Phil Farrow. Phil. Craig and Belkis has kind of uh, been a seesaw battle here, trying to forecast the intensity of Rita, at least during the last few hours. But now it looks like it's finally starting to intensify. It had reached a little wobble around 8 p.m. where it wasn't looking too healthy on satellite imagery. But here it is, and what we're looking at right now is the center of the storm, which is right about there. And if you also take a good look, you can clearly see a big cloud shield developing around the center of circulation. That's indicative of a storm that's trying to get itself together. On the infrared imagery, we can also see this dark area of, of uh, clouds starting to mushroom. That is thunderstorm activity around the center, and it is trying to grow, so it's getting better organized, and the cloud shield is definitely growing. Now, just a few minutes ago, I spoke with uh, experts at the National Hurricane Center, Ed Rappaport, and I asked them exactly about the intensity of Tropical Storm Rita. That's right, from about uh, 4 to say 6 or 7 o'clock, it looked like uh, that Rita was uh, weakening or at least not strengthening at all. Now in the last couple hours, we do see this expansion of the cold cloud tops, an indication of stronger thunderstorms near the center. We don't really know what that translates to quite yet because the next Hurricane Hunter aircraft hasn't arrived quite yet, but in about 60 minutes, maybe 90 minutes, we'll know. Now in the last couple hours, it took just a small jog towards the south, southwest. Has this been a permanent feature, or was it just a wobble? I think it's a wobble, more mainly to the west. The problem is now, with this increase in the cold cloud canopy here, we can't really see what's going on underneath, so we can't tell whether the center has continued to the west, or maybe it's come back up a little bit more to the west-northwest. So that's something else that the aircraft will help us identify when it gets there. As far as intensity goes, are we still looking at a Category 2 very close to the Keys? I think that should be the expectation. We're forecasting Category 1 to Category 2. Intensity forecasting is very difficult, but at this stage, that seems like a reasonable projection. Ed, one of the main worry for anyone here tonight as they get ready to go to sleep and go to bed, what can they expect when they get up the, tomorrow morning? It really depends on where they are. If you're down in the Keys, particularly the lower Keys, then the conditions are going to be deteriorating and probably pretty quickly uh, during the early daylight hours with uh, strong winds, storm surge, and the rain coming in. Uh, we'll have some of that farther north in the Florida Peninsula, southern part of the peninsula, probably tropical storm force winds. 
if the system expands greatly or takes a little bit of a wobble to the north, that could pull hurricane force winds up to, to Miami-Dade County. At this point, the worst of the weather, though, is going to be to the south. All right. Thank you very much, Ed Rappaport, reporting to us from the National Hurricane Center. Thank you very much. And now on live radar, we can clearly see that those feeder bands are starting to move in. And now we're actually getting to see the western edge of the eye wall moving right in through Andros Island. And it should be staying further to the south. That's why we expect that by early tomorrow morning, the Keys should be the first ones to feel the impact of uh, then Hurricane Rita, but also Miami-Dade and Broward counties getting in into the act as far as rain potential is involved starting early tonight. Now, Tropical Storm Rita as of 8 p.m., 70 mile per hour winds moving west-northwest at 13, 320 miles east-southeast of Key West, Florida. And here's the forecast cone as of 8. It will become a Category 1 later on tonight, close to a Category 2 when it gets very near to the Keys tomorrow afternoon. All of South Florida should be watching this because if this high pressure to the north wobbles any uh, and, and goes up to North Florida, then this track will also change and it might just veer off to Miami-Dade and Broward counties. So everyone should be keeping an eye on Tropical Storm Rita. And then as it moves off into the western Gulf of Mexico, it could reach Category 3 status before Friday. I'll have more on this in our local forecast coming up in just a bit. Back to you. So, Phil, at this point in time, the models, as we talked about earlier, were showing more and more agreement. We thought there's a little more confidence, at least as we head into tomorrow. But you indicate that there, even then, there still is a possibility that this thing might jog one way or the other. That is correct. What steers these systems are huge high-pressure systems up above and a low-pressure system that's in the Caribbean Sea. And right now, if any of these systems were to move up or down, these systems can jog as well. And something that the National Hurricane Center always wants you to remember is that we never follow that straight line right in the middle when we're talking about a forecast. These systems tend to jog on their own. They oscillate. It's almost like a spinning top on the uh, surface of the ocean. So any little movement either towards the north or towards the south, and either South Florida can be impacted as well as northern Cuba. So the, uh, the time that we will probably have a better idea as to where this will be going will be at 11 p.m. when we get the latest advisory and the very latest data coming in from the National Hurricane Center. All right, well, from Rita's track, we want to check in now where we think at this hour in time it's likely to hit the hardest. The night team, Joel Brown, is live in Key West for us with what's going on down south. Joel? No, Keith, I have a cell phone to my ear as this audio is very bad right now in Key West. But I can tell you, time is running out on this storm, and you can see Duval Street live. Time is running out for, for evacuees to evacuate. 12 o'clock now is the time that the city is giving people a safe time to evacuate this city. And they are anticipating the worst and preparing for that. Six to nine foot storm surges and winds devastating at over 100 miles an hour. For most in Key West, the decision's been made to stay or not to stay through the storm. Boards are up, businesses shut down, but still residents who'd rather roam than evacuate. It's not that I'm ignoring it, it's like, what can I do about it? The city says it's simple, leave now. Thousands did just that on a crowded U.S. northbound out of the lower keys. These tourists gassing up to get out. You've got to be smart about it, and if you don't respect it after what happened with Katrina, I mean, it's disrespectful to not leave when they tell you to leave. The locals have enough to do without worrying about us out-of-towners. Back in Key West, city officials announced half the city's population is now evacuated. Although we've had about 50 percent of our residents uh, evacuate, there are a number of uh, residents who are taking this very lightly. And this storm can very well, very well be the Katrina that hit New Orleans. Still that nightmare scenario giving way to wishful thinking and hopes Rita is no Katrina. Because we've been here before Katrina happened, Katrina hit us too, it just wasn't that bad yet. We're not underwater, it's not going to be that big a deal. So amidst the plywood and preparation, parts of Key West still open for business one night before Rita roars ashore. We're going to be stir crazy for the next couple of days all cooped up, so this is the last hurrah. <laughs> The last hurrah in Key West, back live on Duval Street with about 50% of this city evacuated. That leaves about 13,000 people or so who are prepared to stay here and ride out whatever it is that Rita has to bring. We are live in Key West tonight. Joel Brown, 7 News 19. 
All right, from you, Joel, we're going to move north now from Key West to Marathon. Night team coverage continues with Rosh Lowe. Rosh? Well, Craig, tonight we ventured out to US-1 out there to see if anyone was still out there on the road. And to our surprise, we did find people out there. They were gassing up at the local gas stations. These are the people who in the past have stayed, but tonight they say, you know what? We have to go. We got five kids, so that's, and, and what happened in New Orleans, you know, we've been watching the TV and they said now that the, feet, the water's gonna come up 12 to 18 feet. The mandatory evacuation of the Keys now hours old, but Kathy Corcoran stands here with her five children on the side of US-1 at one of the few gas stations still open in Marathon and decides it's time to leave. All day long, we've seen the images. Isla Morada here, people boarding up their businesses, taking care of those last moment preparations. They are taking this storm seriously. This is going to be the roughest hurricane we've had here in, uh, since 1965. You think so? Yes, sir. And I think that's going to be really probably a category three before it gets here. This thing is going to light up. It's following the exact track of the 1935 hurricane. You know that? And Richard and Kathy are not alone. People taking every last moment to get out. Still windy here in Marathon, but you can still see the cars streaming out. Up US-1 they go. For whatever reason, people taking no chances with this particular storm. And when you cover hurricanes down here in the Keys, one of the interesting facets of that is that many people down here are so-called hurricane experts. They live in a hurricane-prone area, so they study these hurricanes and they track these hurricanes. That one man we spoke to, Richard, said that he was looking at the track of the hurricane. He thinks it's following the exact track of another hurricane back in the 30s. But for whatever reason here, the people who live in Marathon say this storm gives them a horrible, horrible vibe and they feel like they simply have to leave. And that's what they are doing into the late hours tonight. They are expecting the worst tomorrow morning. We are live in Marathon, Rochlo, 7 News 19. Well, from Marathon on to Key Largo now, where we've seen a line of cars all day and into the evening. The night team's Nicole and Salada standing by live with more on what's going on there. Nicole? Well, Belkis, we certainly have seen that line of cars all day long, but it's starting to slow down a bit now. But as you can also see, the wind is really starting to pick up. But again, the streets are quiet. I just got off the phone with some folks from Monroe County EOC, and they say that they believe the evacuation has gone very smoothly. In fact, they say that they even need needed more buses to shuttle people to the shelter at FIU because, as you've heard, although people here think that they are hurricane experts, they're also taking no chances. A community catching its breath after Katrina, now on the move. Gas stations in South Dade clogged with traffic from early in the day. We've been very busy since last night, uh, more than usual. Uh, people are buying gas, batteries, water, basically whatever you need for the hurricane. Some places even running out of regular unleaded, but tempered by some encouraging news. We're not expecting to have any big shortages or anything because trucks keep delivering. At a Florida City Home Depot, a run on plywood and a run on water, as traffic headed inland remains steady. At the same time, emergency vehicles headed out to help evacuate hospitals if necessary. And in flood-prone homestead, free sandbags to help guard against whatever Rita might bring. Based on what happened in New Orleans, we have nothing to complain about. But Another one right two weeks just after we got everything dried out and all of a sudden here we go again with Rita. I think that's, that's kind of hard for everybody. And likewise here in the Keys as far as folks worrying about flooding, although as you can see the wind is really starting to pick up a lot. They are worried more about what might happen when all that rain, water, and potential storm surge happens here. As far as the evacuation goes, though, Florida Highway Patrol tells me that they have had folks stationed all along US-1 and other roadways all day long trying to move people along. They say that has gone remarkably well, although unfortunately in Florida City just a few hours ago, they did have a fatality when a person was hit by a car. Reporting live in Key Largo, Nicole Insulata, 7 News, 19. All right, Nicole, thanks. Well, a lot of people also out on the road today buying some last minute supplies. Plenty of them. The night team's Tom Haynes continues our night team coverage. He's live in Miami Shores with more on that. Tom? Hi guys, and we're getting one of these uh, feeder bands passing through the area right now. There's a lot of rain and a lot of uh, 
wind blowing around here. Call it the new normal after Hurricane Katrina. At places like this Publix here in Miami Shores, supplies are flying off the shelves here. There's a sign on the window behind me that says, sorry, no water. And that about says it all here. As we've been through a couple of hurricanes in the past couple of seasons, this one kind of feels different. Take a look. The familiar sounds of hurricane preparedness accentuated by the scars left from Hurricane Katrina. Are you treating Rita differently than past hurricanes? Oh, of course, definitely, definitely different, totally different. Everybody's running, you know, more alert. South Florida again threatened by a powerful storm, but this time routine is replaced by regimen. Why the change of heart? Because, like, I see a lot of people in Mississippi struggling and stuff, so now I'm taking it serious. The lines are long, and they have been for some time. Rita short notice not stopping shoppers from packing stores throughout the day. Picked up whatever they had left in Publix, which is juice, um, more juice. After Katrina, people aren't taking any chances, flooding supermarkets, clearing shelves of vital supplies like water. Among the supplies that should be on your hurricane checklist, water is a must. It suggested a gallon per day per person. Also buy non-perishable foods like soup, tuna, beans, and peanut butter and jelly. They won't spoil. Paper items like towels and dishes also come in handy. If you have little ones, don't forget diapers and baby food. A lot of baby milk, a lot of baby pampers, a lot of everything. And so that places like Publix will be up and running after the storm, store managers are doing what the rest of us should have already done. Put up the hurricane shutters. Yeah, boy, that is good advice. Take a look at this video we shot earlier today of people filling up at the gas stations. That has been going on all day around South Florida. Folks heeding the warning of, of officials to gas up your car in preparation for Rita. A lot of people streaming out of the Florida Keys. They need gas. And after the, uh, the storm passes, people don't want to find themselves without gas. So it's a good idea if you're driving around at this point to seek out a gas station if you can. Hopefully there is fuel left, although after hurricanes we often see a shortage in some areas. Hopefully that won't happen in this case. As we come back out live, the rain is still falling, the wind is still blowing here in Miami Shores. The manager here at Publix tells me they're going to stay open until about 11 o'clock tonight. They have a supply truck in the back of the store right now. Hopefully that supply truck contains water, although the manager doesn't know at this point. And most importantly, she tells me they will be open tomorrow. Reporting live in Miami Shores, Tom Haynes, 7 News 19. Well, that is uh, what residents are doing, but what about the tourists out there? There's quite a few of them on South Beach. And that's why we want to check in with the night team's Louis Aguirre, find out more on uh, what's happened there. Louis? Hey, guys. Well, so far, the tourists enjoying this uh, blustery night here on South Beach. Check it out. The surf has been whipped up into a frenzy. We're on 11th Street and Ocean Drive. Check out the, life, the lifeguard house right there on the left. You can pan over there. Joey, thank you. The tide is almost all the way up to the lifeguard house right there. And those of you who know this area of the beach, know that uh, usually the water is pretty far out from the lifeguard house. That just goes to show you how close the tide is to the shores. Moving on to the shore as we start to experience the uh, the outer rims of Tropical Storm Rita. Uh, we just came from Ocean Drive just a moment ago. If you can go to the tape right there. Ocean Drive pretty much a ghost town, but there's still some uh, diehard bars that uh, remain open tonight. And there's still a lot of tourists here left on the beach, remember, this is a voluntary evacuation area, so the beach has not been ordered to evacuate. It is a voluntary evacuation notice, so some people still braving the storm here on the beach, especially some tourists that we found from way across the pond. Well, we were supposed to go to Key West, but we had to cancel that plans, so we're here till Friday now. Are you at all concerned? Well, nervous and anxious, obviously, but same. There's not a lot you can do, really, so you're in with everybody else and you're in with a good crowd and you've just got to get on with it, really. No, we're used to this. It's like every day back home. Yeah. The yeah. rain, but not the wind. You haven't seen the wind yet. Well, no, but we got the wind at home. Yeah. You guys aren't at all concerned about this storm? Not at all. Not too much. Yeah. We went to the beach, saw the water, got a little excited, came and get some beers. Okay. <laughs> well, until they tell you to get out, you're not going to get out. We're not leaving, no matter what. The... And back out live, you see some uh, stragglers right here, some... Uh, some people looking at the show being put on right now as we speak by Mother Nature. And I don't sense a big 
uh, sense of concern right here on the beach, but that's just the, you know, the, the way we are here on South Beach. Uh, of course, uh, they are paying close attention to the weather advisories and the reports, but so far from what we've seen, uh, not too concerned here on the beach, uh, especially the tourists who say they're going to brave it out and see what happens and take it one step at a time. We're live on South Beach. Really windy, by the way. It's picking up. Louis Aguirre, 7 News 19. Well, it is a tropical storm after all. After all right, all. Lou, thanks. Well, for updates on Rita, 24 hours a day, call the 7 News Tropic Watch hotline. There are the numbers in Miami-Dade County, 305-477-7751. And in Broward, that number is 954-776-7751. You can also get the latest coordinates on Rita sent directly to your cell phone. Just sign up for our cone on your phone. All you have to do is log on to our website at WSVN.com. Well, still ahead from the 7 News night team, all eyes on Key West live pictures from DeVal Street where residents there are bracing for Rita when she becomes a hurricane. And I'm Mike DePasquale in Hollywood Beach where the winds are kicking up. Now people are not taking Rita seriously walking along the broadwalk, but some merchants are. We will explain. And I'm Tiffany Tucker, live in Hollover Beach, where the effects of Rita are being felt. People aren't walking out here. They are taking those warnings very seriously, and we've got some live pictures to show you coming up. I'm Lynn Martinez, live at the news desk. What is open and what is closed? Also, where do you go to seek shelter? All the information you need to know coming up. Also, how about this? Katrina evacuees living now in South Florida, and now they're getting ready for another storm. How strong will Rita get, and just where is this strengthening storm headed? We're awaiting the 11 o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. We'll have the answers when our coverage of Tropical Storm Rita continues in just two minutes. My picture is from Hollywood Beach, where the rough surf could mean still more erosion along the South Florida coast. Hurricane Katrina already leaving its mark on our beaches. And now another tropical system is only going to make things worse. The night team's Mike Pasquale live on Hollywood Beach with more on this and what's going on out there, Mike. Well, Belkis and Craig, the winds are kicking up right now. There's a nice uh, chop on the ocean. And a couple things we want to talk to you about. First of all, there is a voluntary curfew right now here on Hollywood Beach. We've seen people walking up and down the Broadwalk for the last couple of hours, and there's some more information about tomorrow. But first of all, I want to introduce you to Julio Rodriguez. He's with the Sheldon Resorts Hotel. And Julio, you were telling me that Rita, right now, if it intensifies, this could be the worst thing to happen to you. Yes, it can, because we just got over uh, Katrina, and we got hit pretty hard. We got rooms and we got damage in about ten rooms, and it's kind of hard on us right now. But we got to deal with it. You were, we were talking earlier, and you said that those 10 rooms, that the windows were blown out, and, and, and that was the worst of it. And now you're just hoping that Rita and all the raft that she may bring with her maybe eases up before it hits Hollywood. Yes, I do. Yes, I do, because we don't really need this right now. But. Julio, one thing, and I want to show everybody this. Uh, you actually put this sign on the boarded up uh, one of your shops there. Go away, Rita. You are not wanted. I, I know that anything right now would help, and, and you're hoping for the best. Yes, I am. Yes, I am, because this is, like I said, this is a hard hit if it comes in at full force, but we'll deal with it whatever way we can, you know. You know, typically on a night like this, there are people up and down the broadwalk spending money, using your hotel, and, and when you have situations like this, you know, again, we were talking earlier, it's just like, you know, one after another. Yes, it is, and, it, you know, right now we have one customer, and when I seen them come in, I'm like, well, what are you doing here? But, hey, they're home, and they will get taken care of like they're at home. That's, that's what we do at Sheldon. We take care of people. Like, you know, you want to be taken care of at home. All right, Julio, best of luck to you, okay, Thank as you, you ride this out. Uh, a couple of things Hollywood police did tell me. As I mentioned earlier, there, first, there's a voluntary curfew here tonight. Uh, they're thinking about a mandatory curfew tomorrow. Now, tomorrow morning, they will have a voluntary evacuation. That means people live on the beach and also mobile homes adjacent to the beach. They'll so have a voluntary evacuation. Hollywood police say they have not decided whether that would be a mandatory evacuation. Live from Hollywood Beach, I'm Mike DePasquale, 7 News 19. Okay, Mike, thank you. Well, of course, the schools are closing, but the shelters are opening. And that's not all. The night team's Lynn Martinez live at the news desk with the tales on all the information we need tonight, Lynn. Craig and Belkis, three weeks ago, Hurricane Katrina certainly scared enough South Florida people into being prepared. And tonight, residents and our local government 
is making sure that all bases are covered. First, though, let's talk about your schools in Miami-Dade and Broward and in Monroe County. Schools, of course, are closed tomorrow. Also, county offices are closed across Miami-Dade County, Broward County, and Monroe County. MIA and Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport remain open at this hour, but of course that could change if the weather conditions deteriorate. Also, mandatory evacuations are underway, as we've been telling you. Here are the evacuations. In Miami-Dade County, mobile home residents are being told to leave. In Monroe County, everyone is being told to get out, although they're not physically forcing people to leave. And ironically, the storm has postponed a relief concert for the victims of Hurricane Katrina that was supposed to take place this Sunday at the AAA. That has yet to be rescheduled. When it is rescheduled, we'll certainly let you know. And now on to the shelters. Contrary to the shelters in the Gulf Coast after Hurricane Katrina, our shelters will have some sort of security. And take a look at some pictures we have for you of the people from the Keys bus to the FIU shelter. There are no shelters open in Monroe County because it's too dangerous. Everybody is under a mandatory evacuation. So these people were sent free of charge to the mainland there at the FIU shelter. And next, we have pictures from the shelter at Booker T. Washington High School. The last count indicated about 150 people seeking shelter there. That shelter, one of three American Red Cross shelters, open in Miami-Dade County. Also open tonight, Robert Morgan Senior High. That is located at 181st Street and 122nd Avenue in southwest Miami-Dade. Booker T. Washington High School, you saw there at 12th Street and 6th Avenue in Miami-Dade County. And Dr. Carlos J. Finlay Elementary School at 8th Street and 117th Avenue in southwest Miami-Dade. Now remember, you cannot bring your pets to those shelters. However, there is a pet-friendly shelter in the Sunshine Pavilion at the Miami-Dade Fair and Exposition. Remember, your pet has to be in a cage and you must be pre-registered and bring, of course, food and water for your pet. If you have any questions, Miami-Dade County residents can call 311. That only works in Miami-Dade County. That's all you have to hit on your phone, 311. Again, you can only call this from Miami-Dade County. In Broward County, three shelters are open as well. There are Monarch High Schools on Wild, Monarch High School, rather, on Wiles Road there in Coconut Creek, uh, Fox Trail Elementary on Knob Hill Road in Davie, and Watkins Elementary on 52nd Avenue that is in Pembroke Park. Broward County also has a shelter up and running for people who have pets, pet friendly if you will. This one is at Millennium Middle School. It is at 94th Avenue in Tamarack. Now if you didn't get a chance to write all that information down and you live in Broward County, you can call this number. It's 954-831-4000 or you can log on to Broward.org. Again, all of these shelters are for people in the Florida Keys who are under mandatory evacuations and for everyone else living in low-lying coastal areas in Miami-Dade and Broward County under voluntary evacuations or anybody who is a little frightened and wants to go to a shelter. Remember, though, to bring your own food and water when you go to a shelter. And those people in shelters already say because of what the people in the Gulf Coast suffered with Hurricane Katrina, they wanted to make sure they were safe. So people are definitely heeding the warnings this time. At the news desk, Lynn Martinez, 7 News, 19. Okay, Lynn, and we'll, of course, be repeating that information. And you can find it at WSVN.com, too. No, there's a lot there, an awful lot to absorb. So we'll, we'll continue to repeat that info. Coming up in just two minutes, live pictures. These are from Hallover Beach. The surf's up and the beaches. They're taking quite a beating. You'll remember Key Biscayne hit hard by Katrina when it blew through. Now residents there taking no chances as Rita looms closer. Have you had enough of hurricane season? Yes. All in favor, say aye. Well, we're going to tell you how to handle all this stress. We'll have that story coming up. And, of course, the $10,000 question, where is Rita heading and when will it become a hurricane? Phil Farrell, hopefully we're closer to some answers. Correct. By 11 o'clock, we will know. But if I was a, were a gambling man, I would believe that by 11 p.m., this will be a hurricane. And it's still heading for the Keys. It's less than uh, 400 miles away from Key West. The very latest in just a few minutes. All right, we're still watching Tropical Storm Rita very closely and waiting on that 11 p.m. advisory. But if we take a look at the latest imagery, we can clearly see that the cloud shield is growing and this dark area that surrounds the center of circulation, it too is growing as well. Now, what this means is that there's a lot of thunderstorm activity around the alleged eye, and as that grows, so will the storm. 
And uh, right now on radar, we can see the feeder bands coming in. And for the first time, we can now see the western flank or the western edge of the eye of the storm. There it is moving over Andros Island. Very heavy rainfall right here on the western end. And it's starting to move over the Atlantic waters, especially over Bimini. And it should start moving ever so slowly over South Florida during the next uh, few hours during the overnight. And the worst should start moving in in the Keys as most of the heaviest of the rainfall is in the lower latitude. So it looks like the middle Keys and lower Keys will feel some of this uh, very strong precipitation during the next few hours. Here are Miami-Dade and Broward counties. We did see a couple of the feeder bands moving through, especially over parts of Broward. Right now it's over U.S. 27. Miami-Dade over western parts of uh, Kayalia and Miami Lakes and southern Miami-Dade County very near Homestead. We're also getting some moderate to heavy rainfall. There's still more of this activity offshore, so during the overnight we will see plenty of activity here in Miami-Dade, Broward, as well as the Keys. Well, this is the 8 p.m. advisory, 70 mile per hour winds, 23.1 north, 77.0 west, moving west-northwest at 13, 320 miles east-southeast of Key West, Florida. Here's the forecast cone. It should continue towards the west, guided by high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south. By Tuesday afternoon, it should be a Category 2 very close to Key West, and then moving out into the Gulf of Mexico on Wednesday. And when it does that, it should become a Category 3, a major system by the middle of the week. And then it looks like it could make landfall anywhere between Louisiana and Texas. Now, what's steering the storm is this high pressure and the upper low kind of squeezing it towards the west. So by tomorrow, it should be very close to the lower keys. Now, remember, if anything shifts north or south, the track will also have to be adjusted. So everyone in South Florida should be keeping a good eye on Tropical Storm Rita. The wind field, we're still looking at anywhere between 2 and 6 p.m., very close to Key West from the Seven Mile Bridge all the way on down. You will Will, uh, definitely be impacted by those hurricane force winds. I'll have the very latest as soon as it becomes available. Let's send it back to the desk. All right, Phil, we're waiting on that advisory. We'll get back with you. Well, you know what's already been impacted? South Florida beaches, they were already battered by Katrina. And unfortunately, Rita could be round two. Let's head on over now to Hallover Beach. The night team's Tiffany Tucker is there with more. Tiffany? Well, Craig and Belkies, this beach closed about 5 o'clock this evening. It just wasn't safe. In fact, this is about the only thing you see out here. It's a ghost town. You see the lifeguard stations there closed up, locked up because the conditions were not right. Let's go ahead and show you some video. Rita obviously kicking up some winds on Hallover Beach. Trees swaying, a typical scene, especially when a storm moves through. There are also plenty of choppy waves and rising tide, but so far nothing like we saw with Hurricane Katrina. Now, earlier in the day, this was the scene, the beach patrol canvassing the area, clearing everyone off, shutting it down for safety reasons, as I just mentioned, but still there were some people walking along the beach area. Now, not long after that, a couple of feeder bands moved through. We saw a significant change in the sky. The sky got a little bit dark and also a pinkish color. Not after long after that, Big sheets of rain came down, and that along with those choppy waves that we talked about. Back out live here again, uh, pretty calm out here other than uh, some winds picking up. I'd say maybe 15 mile an hour winds, but uh, the only people that we've seen out here are officials kind of canvassing the area about 15 minutes or so ago just to make sure that this beach was absolutely closed. They've locked the gates, but again, they don't want anybody out here that should not be out here, and that's pretty much the scene. Reporting live in Hallover Beach, Tiffany Tucker, 7 News 19. All right, Tiffany, thank you. We'll check back with you a little later. Well, South Florida residents spending their Monday getting ready for Tropical Storm Marina. Seven Sky Force above Key Biscayne today. Workers at the Grand Bay Tower on Crandon Boulevard filling dozens of sandbags, hoping to keep out the floodwaters there. Those sandbags now blocking entrances to the apartments. Earlier today, officials issued a voluntary evacuation order for Key Biscayne and other coastal residents. Parrot Jungle Island in Miami also getting ready for Rita. Employees gathering the parrots, the feathered friends, too fragile to weather the storm, heading to safer areas of that facility. Directors say the birds will be placed in hurricane-proof buildings until the storm finally passes. The park at this point in time plans to reopen on Wednesday. Of course, that may be subject to change. I oh, hope all the birdies are okay. Yeah. Still ahead from the night team, another live look. These are live pictures out of Duval Street in Key West. Tropical Storm Rita is looming. 
and she's expected to get stronger. Well, double trouble for some Katrina evacuees escaping the Gulf Coast, now staying in South Florida and in Rita's path. We're going to hear from them just ahead. And could Rita mean more trouble for the levees in New Orleans? One expert is weighing in, coming up. Rita set to strike in South Florida could feel some strong effects from this storm. Now imagine this, you are a Katrina evacuee staying in South Florida. Well, it's certainly enough to cause some anxiety. Let's send things back out now to Tom Haynes. He's in Miami Shores with more on this hurricane anxiety. Tom? Yeah, guys, just a few weeks ago, Help Me Howard actually helped relocate a young Louisiana family devastated by Hurricane Katrina down here to South Florida, more specifically, Miami Beach. Well, now for this family and Rita approaching, seems like deja vu all over again. Just two weeks ago, Claude Flott, his fiance, and their young son, Ty, arrived in Miami Beach. It's exhausting, it's stressful, it's, you don't know where to start. They had driven straight through from Houston after fleeing New Orleans in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. At least we have each, you know, other. each other, you know, yeah. that's the most important thing. In the last two weeks, they've settled in, thanks to the generosity in South Florida. We feel real comfortable in Miami. We feel that, you know, it fits us, it fits our needs. But now an uncomfortable feeling has returned. Another storm, Rita, has their new home in her sights. Well, that's kind of hard because, you know, I'm not over the last storm. Claude had hoped he was done with hurricanes this year, but says Katrina taught him a lesson. I never was the one to say, let's go, let's get out of town. But now, we, we're out, you know. He says if it looks like it'll get bad, he'll pack up what's important, his fiance and their son, and go north. If we lose everything, we're not losing much. I mean, we lost everything already. Claude says so many in New Orleans knew someone who died. And that makes possession seem unimportant. I didn't lose any family members. Um, Erica, my fiance, she's still missing one of her brothers. Claude feels he's one of the lucky ones. He started to get settled in. Erica's even started to find work. But he knows another storm is going to put a lot of people on edge. This country doesn't really need this right now, you know, let alone anymore. It's, it's, it's a stress on, on the whole country. Unfortunately, Mother Nature does not take that into consideration. After Rita is done with South Florida, it looks like it is headed right back up to the Gulf Coast. The question tonight is, will Louisiana and other areas hit hard by Katrina be spared this time? We're live in Miami Shores, Tom Haynes, 7 News 19. Well, still reeling from Hurricane Katrina, Rita could mean even more trouble for the people of New Orleans. Those oh-so-important levees that keep the city from flooding are again in jeopardy. It's the storm surge and the levees that are concerned because waterfalls, you know, we may have some flooding uh, from rainfall, but we'll, we'll pump it out and it'll set us back a little bit. But uh, the real issue with the levees is if we have storm surge. And so, you know, of course, we're concerned. And again, we're shoring up where we can um, to get ready. It's going to depend on where the storm hits. Well, the mayor of New Orleans today suspended his plan to start allowing residents back into the city move coming as forecasters warn that Rita could possibly head that way. Well, as the Gulf Coast recovers from Katrina, the director of the National Hurricane Center set to testify before Congress. Max Mayfield leaving for Washington today to appear before a subcommittee where he'll discuss the role of accurate hurricane prediction. Mayfield, along with five other experts, will talk about what further studies are needed to improve hurricane forecasting. Well, coming up in just a couple of minutes, our coverage will continue. In the meantime, a live look outside our 7 News studios in North Bay Village, where you can really see the surf kicking up there, and uh, that's just going to get progressively worse as the hours wear on tonight. Well, of course, everything depends on the forecast track. We are awaiting the all-important 11 o'clock advisory as soon as we get it. You know we're going to turn it around and bring it right to you. And do we even have to ask the question, have you had enough of hurricane season? Well, there's a resounding yes, I think, for all of us. It's taking its toll on your sanity. We'll tell you how to handle the stress coming up. First, though, that advisory is just now coming in, the 11 o'clock advisory. Here's Phil Farrow.
Well, thank you very much. There is still some good news because it remains as a tropical storm. It's just on the verge of becoming a hurricane, but the National Hurricane Center is deciding it, deciding to keep it as a tropical storm right now. The very latest 23.3 north, 77.8 west, about 120 miles south southwest of Nassau, Bahamas, or about 270 miles east southeast of Key West, Florida, moving west-northwest at around 14. And the very latest in the intensity chart still shows that it has 70 mile per hour sustained winds around the center. However, the latest advisory also indicates that this is still on the verge of becoming a hurricane as it continues to grow and the thunderstorm activity continues to wrap around the center of circulation. I'll have the very latest in just a few minutes on Tropical Storm Rita. Let's send it right now to break. Have a live look at the situation in Hallover Beach. Tropical Storm Rita blowing things around there. Conditions will be getting worse throughout the evening and into the morning hours, especially for you folks down in the Keys. It has been an active season, and many of us are pretty much over it. I think that's a good way to sum it up. Here we are, though, facing yet another storm. Health Specialist Marilyn Mitzel shows us now how to handle all the stress. As Tropical Storm Rita whips closer, Diana Ennanen's mind is churning too. When a hurricane, you get the warning that it's coming on, I immediately, you know, start doing my panic first. It's already starting to get choppy, and that already brings the anxiety to you. It's just the fact that they're coming on so quickly now. We usually have a break in between them to where you can, you know, get your business back up running. You can kind of regroup and we're not getting a chance to regroup this time. Like many of us, what Katrina did here in South Florida just a few weeks ago also weighs heavily on Diana's mind. Without power for four days, that totally the heat uh, alone was enormous. Just to lose four days of business, but then to be able to pick back up again was, was very hard. What happened in New Orleans is horrifying. Watching the images on Katrina tends to make us all panic here. It makes everybody very, very frightened of hurricane. We're already at R, the 17th named storm of the season. Each one seems to stir up more emotion and worry. Well, it's easy to recognize you're having anxiety when you find yourself worrying, maybe crying, maybe having trouble sleeping. But we need to keep things in proper perspective. When a storm is coming, make last minute reasonable preparations and then relax. If you can't cope, reach out for help. When you're feeling like you can't get past it, when it remains more than a day or two and you're feeling an excessively high degree of anxiety or fear or sadness or worries, then you can seek professional help. Diana is trying to focus on the positive. We just have to hope that it misses us t totally this time. Marilyn Mitzel, 7 News. Well, still ahead from the night team, how close will Rita come to the Florida Keys? And how strong will it be when it gets there? More on the latest advisory ahead. All right, Tropical Storm Rita looking very healthy on satellite imagery, but as of 11 p.m., it remains a tropical storm. We can see the feeder bands starting to come across the Atlantic waters. There's the western edge of the eye of the hurricane, and it's looking very active on the western side. So the Keys are looking to get some rough weather sometime tomorrow. Here are all those feeder bands coming across Broward and even parts of interior parts of Miami-Dade getting rainfall activity. As of 11 p.m., 70 mile per hour winds moving west northwest at 14, 267 miles east southeast of Key West, Florida. Forecast cones still suggesting that by 8 a.m., it will be a category one, by 2 p.m., a category two down by the Keys. But now take a look at how the cone has shrunk. It looks like Miami Dade and Broward counties out of a direct impact. However, they still have in effect the hurricane watches and warnings for South Florida and of course a hurricane warning for all of the Keys. Once uh, Rita enters the uh, Gulf of Mexico, it should become a category three and then possibly making landfall anywhere near Louisiana and Texas. We'll have more as it develops or right now, let's go to a break. Seven sports.